Man, this, one, this is not feeling right. Excuse me a second here. Uh, first time I met Coot, uh, I was a freshman in college. Freshman year, my dorm room. Freshman year, I got invited to an Alpha Gam date party. It was actually when I was a freshman. You know, little, little known fact here. So, Coot in between Radford and Longwood had his own medical practice. I met Coot on the sidewalk, walking to class, and he looked me in the eye and he said, you look like an exec man. Talking to people in this, he bumped into me and called me a honky. Went over to St. George and the first thing I see is this weird hillbilly. So I go in for a routine colonoscopy. When I come in there, luby finger, whoop, right up the butthole. I felt safe for some reason. And you know, Coot had just transferred here from Radford. And so he immediately comes up and for some reason, he just put a finger in my butt. Coot brought me aside one night and he said, Josh, I want you to join my fraternity. Best decision I ever made. And you know what, I'm grateful for him. Well, the thing is about Coot is a lot of people think that Dan follows him, but I actually think that Coot follows Dan. Dan's a, Dan's a really, really great guy. He just, a lot of us look up to him in the chapter. He's like a, he's a resolute man. Blake reminds me of Dan in so many ways. Dan's character, his resiliency. Dan's perfect, we all know that. Biggest thing, he's looking big picture. CEO, that's what he's going for. Enterprise, he's working his way to the top. They have not the willingness to fail, but the drive to succeed and to learn. Dan, he, he goes through every day just drinking and sitting. My favorite part about Coot is how he carries himself as a man. I like that he can take on adversity. Honestly, what I love about Coot is probably adversity. You know what, this one might throw people off, but that man's ass has no hair. Phenomenal, Coot, uh, well, I'd say 50, 50, más o menos. I don't know how that works, but it blows my mind and I wish every day I could be like that. It's cute. Just the way that he acts around his friends, he just exudes adversity. Whether it be writing a 500 word paper, in under seven hours, going a full night without pissing the bed, whether that be getting poop on his face, he does not quit. And that's what you have to understand. Oh, he pisses himself like constantly. Um, definitely continually pee in the bed every night. He's always just wetting himself. One time he was just sitting on Baker's couch wide awake, um, piss his pants. And it, the funny thing is like some people do it when they're drunk, but Coop does it every night. His urinary problem, is a, it's a huge problem. I think he needs to get it checked out. He may actually be a 40-year-old man. He literally just pisses every night in his bed, his own bed. Good, love you, man, gonna miss you, but um, it's, gonna be, it's gonna be sad without you. Just, it's gonna be, be a sad time without you. Without you, Coot, I don't know what I'm gonna do, um, but I love you, man. Oh, I hate him. I hate him so much. It's been such a rough four years. Every time he comes around, he's always manhandling the shit out of me. I'm doing my best, and we have to talk to each other about these kind of things, because we're never going to be the same after his death. But we'll keep fighting, keep working, because that's what he would want. He's a fun, loving guy. And you're aware that Coop's not dead. No, I know he's not dead, but you got to be prepared for anything, and that's what Coot taught me. Love you, Coot. 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 Love you, Coot.